NASA says it's time to prioritize the planet Venus. This follows the recent discovery of possible life on the planet. Is there any evidence of life on Venus? Researchers in the scientific community have been pondering this subject for more than a century. There's no denying that Venus is a dangerous place to live. It has no liquid water on its surface, a temperature high enough to melt lead, and an atmosphere that's so thick that the air pressure at the surface is more than 90 times that on Earth, making life there extremely unlikely. In an unexpected turn of events, however, NASA has recently discovered declassified photographs of Venus shot by the Soviet Union, and this completely alters the narrative. If you ever get the chance to hear the acoustics on the surface of Venus, you will find them to be incredibly satanic and horrific. This scorching world is home to mountains and volcanoes that spew sulfuric acid clouds with average temperatures of nearly 465 degrees Celsius. Strong winds are pushing clouds over a hazy yellow sky, and the barometric pressure in the atmosphere is equivalent to being 1,500 meters underground. Many people view Mars as Earth's distant sister, despite the vast distance, at 34 million miles. During its closest approach to Earth, Venus is only 25 million miles away. Venus and Earth are almost the same size and mass, while Mars is about half as big as Earth. As it turns out, Earth and Venus may have once been identical twins. Water may have existed on Venus as recently as 700 million years ago, according to a paper published in 2016 by NASA scientists led by Michael Way and his team. If so, could Earth eventually end up looking as Venus does right now? This doesn't mean that Earth and Venus are exactly the same. Understanding Venus thanks to Soviet research has shown us several ways in which they vary from Earth. Nothing substantial was known about Venus before the Soviet Union decided to devote resources to learning more about it. Upon exploring Venus, what did researchers find? Would it be possible for there to be life on Venus? When the Soviets came to Earth, what did they keep hidden from everyone? If you want to know the answers to these questions and more, keep watching this video till the end. There's no other planet quite like Earth, although there may have been billions of years ago. On March 27, 1972, a Soviet atmospheric space probe and lander called Venera 8 flew by our neighboring planet Venus to have a look around. Its spacecraft was the second to touch down on Earth successfully. Venera 8 made some unexpected discoveries about Venus's visibility and provided critical geological data that further validates Venus's status as Earth's sister planet, despite our inability to see its surface from orbit. More and more people are choosing to fly to Mars instead of Venus because of its cooler temperatures and thinner atmosphere. No lander has been launched to the surface of Venus since the Soviet Union's Vega 2 mission in 1985. Venus is Earth's sister across the board, not twin sisters, but their sisters, says Gregory Shelnut, a distinguished professor of geochemistry at National Taiwan Normal University. Between 1961 and 1983, the Venera program, the Soviet Union's investigation of Venus, was a major accomplishment in the space race. Being the first totally successful landing of a human-made object on another planet, Venera 8 created history when it touched down on Venus. Venera 7, its predecessor, having made history's first aborted attempt at an extraterrestrial landing two years prior. However, after landing, Venera 7 turned over because of a faulty parachute, seriously injuring the lander and rendering it incapable of future continuous, high-quality data transmission. Throughout the course of its 18-year run, the Soviet Union's Venera program sent 13 spacecraft into Venus' atmosphere and 8 to the surface. Venera 8 was launched with the goal of taking atmospheric and surface measurements of Venus. It took 118 days to get to the planet. The portion of Venera 8 meant to descend through the atmosphere to the surface was equipped with a cooling system. One reason is that Venus's midday surface temperature can reach melting point for lead at 620 degrees Fahrenheit. Venera 8 carried a radio transmitter, a light meter, a pressure gauge, an altimeter, and a gas analyzer. It was determined from Venera 7's atmospheric measurements that 97% of Venus's air is made up of carbon dioxide, so Venera 8 was dispatched to validate this finding. A pressure of 9.0 MPA and a surface temperature of 887 degrees Fahrenheit were also recorded.
These numbers proved without a doubt that there is no liquid water on Venus's surface, making the planet uninhabitable for humans. The magnetic field of Venus is either completely absent or very feeble. That is because the surface of Venus is rapidly approaching the Curie point. In other words, once a substance is heated above its Curie temperature, its magnetic properties no longer hold. Even though Venera 8's measurements matched up with those from Venera 7, the photometer on board revealed a surprising result following the spacecraft's relatively uneventful landing. In spite of the fact that it was physically impossible to see through Venus's dense atmosphere on the planet's surface, visibility on the surface was roughly equivalent to that of Earth on a foggy day, allowing for a range of about one kilometer in any direction. Clouds were viewed from a very high altitude. The landing of Venera 8 opened the door for surface photography in the eyes of the Venera Project's engineers. This means that when Venera 9 landed successfully on Venus in 1975, it was the first lander to ever snap photographs of the surface of a planet other than Earth. Venera 8 started to self-destruct less than an hour after touching down on Venus. Moreover, Venera 8 assessed the concentration of thorium, potassium, and uranium in Venus's surface material during its 50 minutes and 11 seconds of data transmission after landing. These elements are extremely rare and can only be found in very minute concentrations in basalts from places like Hawaii and the mid-ocean ridges. Data from Venera 8 stood in stark contrast to that of other landers. Even with a 30% margin of error, the trace element values found by Venera 8 were too high to be consistent with the basalts typically found near a mid-ocean ridge or in Hawaii. Unlike Venera 8, the other Venus landers recorded geochemical values more akin to those found on or along a mid-ocean ridge. Natural radiation that has an effect on us comes primarily from the potassium in these crystal rocks. You may apply the same logic to the moon and have the same results. Mars fits this description perfectly. That holds true for any terrestrial planet. In his 2019 paper titled, The Curious Case of the Rock at Venera 8, author and scientist Shellnut describes how he used Earth-based crystallization modeling techniques to speculate that the trace element values at the Venera 8 landing site might be similar to those found in a specific type of continental crust on Earth, known as Archaean Greenstone Belts. The time frame of the Archaean period on Earth is roughly 4.5 billion years ago. Greenstone Belts are a form of continental crust that many geologists believe have chemically evolved from mafic basalts over extremely long periods of time. Earth's physical appearance changed dramatically during the Archean. Soon after the planet formed, temperatures rapidly rose to dangerous levels. Due to the tremendous temperatures on both planets, the tectonic regimes of the prehistoric Earth and early Venus are still a mystery. Plate tectonics as we know it on Earth have not been detected on Venus. Venus's topography also differs drastically from Earth's, Larger than Africa and dotted with towering volcanoes, Shellnut's world has one major distinction. The question of whether or not plate tectonics in their modern form were active on Earth during the Archean is a matter of hot discussion. After all, what triggers these landforms on Venus? So, what is causing all of this kinkiness and kinking? A number of compression mountain ranges have been identified on Venus. The rifts show that there is tectonic activity but the continent has not yet broken apart into independent plates, as he put it. He elaborates, saying, Venus is most likely operating under an Archean tectonic system, not a modern Earth plate tectonic system. In other words, a system similar to that of ancient Earth during the Archean, when there may not have been defined plates and the temperature and interior of the Earth were much higher. Published in 2021 in the Journal of Astrobiology, the articles consider Venus as a potential habitat for microorganisms like bacteria and other creatures. More than 50 scientists met in Moscow for the 2019 Venera D Venus Cloud Habitability Workshop, where they analyzed past studies to better understand Earth's ability to maintain life over many billions of years. This collection is the result of their labors. Having evolved at the same time as Earth four and a half billion years ago, Venus has a vast atmosphere consisting mostly of carbon dioxide, and it's subject to extremes like high temperatures, high winds, and volcanic activity. Despite the surface's inhospitability, the planet's thick global cloud cover may provide more hospitable conditions for some microbial life forms, 
due to the availability of sunlight, nutrients, and some water, all of which can create narrow but habitable zones, such as those hypothesized to exist in the atmosphere. The planet's ability to support life is bolstered by the fact that it receives just a small amount of UV energy via its middle and lower cloud layers. Also, the presence of salt in cloud droplets may help neutralize their acidity and make them more habitable. With varied degrees of success, scientists have dispatched nearly 50 expeditions to the neighboring planet since the 1960s. In the next 10 years, seven probes will head to Venus to study the planet's weather and geography. Launching a tiny probe in 2023, Rocket Labs hopes to locate phosphine. After the radar-equipped Venus orbiter from the India Space Research Organization arrives in the middle of 2026, the next spacecraft on the docket is NASA's Veritas Radar Orbiter, which is set to arrive in 2027. The Da Vinci mission is scheduled for flight in 2028 and will involve a dual-purpose spacecraft to collect atmospheric measurements from orbit and an atmospheric probe to sift through the dense atmosphere, collecting data as it goes. Russia's Roscosmos State Corporation for Space Activities is planning to launch an orbiter and lander in 2029 as part of a mission called Venera D to collect crucial data on Earth's atmosphere and surface. In addition, NASA is contributing by delivering a compact lander with a lengthy service life. Developed by the European Space Agency and NASA, the Envision Radar Orbiter will round up a fruitful decade of exploration. These future expeditions will shed light on numerous mysteries surrounding a planet long assumed to be inhospitable to life. That pretty much wraps this video up, guys. Thanks for watching. So, what are your thoughts about these shocking discoveries on Venus? Share with us in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to this channel with a bell notification if you enjoy watching our content. We upload some awesome stuff here which you will most certainly enjoy. Hit a like on this video and leave a comment below. See you guys in the next one.